36 years ago, China sent something into space that would change the world forever. Space seeds. Beyond the ozone layer, space gradually loses gravity, magnetic field, air, and environmental pressure, as a result, it receives large quantities of cosmic radiation, the effects of which still are not understood. If humans are to explore beyond the realms of our solar system, growing crops in space is one of the major directions we need to head. For us to survive in space for a long time, it is necessary to ensure that plants can complete the alternation of generations and successfully reproduce in space. Welcome to Lab 360, it's time to explore. Since the beginning of space exploration, researchers have been exploring the role of microgravity, cosmic radiation, and other aspects of the space environment on plant growth and development. To create superior crop varieties and achieve noticeable success in the space environment, several types of research have been conducted so far. And China has been engaged in space breeding for decades, starting in the 1980s using its recoverable Shijian spacecraft. Space-grown plants have been exposed to cosmic radiation and microgravity, which has led to the generation of crop varieties with diverse genotypes and phenotypes, arising from different cellular, subcellular, genomic, chromosomal, and biochemical changes. It was in 1987, when China sent its first crop seeds into space, marking the start of the country's journey in space breeding. Over the past 30 years, it has conducted over 30 such space experiments involving plant seeds, seedlings, and strains, resulting in the cultivation of almost 1,000 new varieties. In order to obtain improved variants of a crop in outer space, multiple types of research have been conducted so far. Space-grown plants have been exposed to cosmic radiation and microgravity, which in turn has led to development of crop varieties with diverse chemical and biological changes. The damage done to DNA and changes on a chromosomal level due to cosmic radiation are a major cause for genetic polymorphism, leading to the genesis of mutated crops. And no, you won't get superpowers if you consume them. Instead these mutations will lead the next generation crop varieties capable of surviving diverse environmental conditions and higher yield. Rice, the crop that feeds nearly half of the world's population, is considered to be a major candidate for the life support system in future manned deep space exploration. It was recently reported that China harvested the first batch of rice that it is calling space rice or rice from heaven. The typical yield of rice cultivation in China is 400 to 600 kilograms per hectare, but the new type of rice seeds grown from those flown on board the Chang'e 5 mission in 2020 have an average output of more than 800 kilograms per hectare. And it's not only rice seeds China has sent into space, cultivation has ranged from staple foods to vegetable crops such as wheat, corn, pepper and tomato among 66 mutant crop varieties. The Anongto 1 spacebread type is bigger and has a greater aroma than regular morel mushrooms. According to projections, this year's output might approach 480 kg per hectare, a significant increase above standard types, which typically yield 150 to 200 kilograms per hectare. A researcher from Kunming Institute of Botany has said, the mushroom that survives a space trip smells even better. According to experts, China may also work with other nations to increase food production, particularly in Africa and Latin America, where domestic food resources are limited. They emphasize that China can assist them in breeding indigenous crops to boost productivity, resistance to pests and diseases, and defense capacities through space breeding, which is also the country's way of shouldering its responsibility as a responsible global power. And to display its supremacy, China has outdone itself this time by beating Elon Musk SpaceX. The Zhuke-2 rocket, developed by Chinese company LandSpace, successfully soared to orbit after launching from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in the Gobi Desert. U.S. Space Force Tracking confirmed Chinese reports that the methane-fueled rocket made it to orbit, tweeted astrophysicist and satellite tracker Jonathan McDowell. It was a milestone effort for Zhu K2, which suffered an anomaly during its debut flight on December 14, 2022. Methane, aside from burning with a pretty blue color during launch, has been billed by advocates as being more environmentally friendly. While methane is a greenhouse gas, 
it is cleaner than the standard RP-1, kerosene, used in many rockets. Many US companies are working on methane-fueled rockets as well, including SpaceX with its Starship system, Blue Origin with New Glenn, Rocket Lab with Neutron, United Launch Alliance with Vulcan Centaur and Relativity Space with its Terran line. Some of these vehicles have suffered issues in recent months, however. Terran 1 failed to reach orbit on its debut launch in March, for example, and SpaceX issued a self-destruct command to Starship during its first fully stacked launch in April after the vehicle suffered several anomalies. SpaceX is developing Starship to help settle on Mars, and methane fuel can be sourced on the Red Planet, company founder and CEO Elon Musk has stressed. Vulcan Centaur was supposed to fly for the first time in early May, but that liftoff has been delayed after an anomaly occurred during testing of the rocket's upper stage. China and its private space companies have been on a tear in terms of launches, taking 54 missions to orbit in 2022 and targeting more than 60 in 2023. By comparison, SpaceX, by far the busiest US launcher, launched 61 rockets to space in 2022. While the global space community remains enthralled by these developments, it's important to acknowledge China's significant contributions in the realm of exploration. The space race is getting exciting. For a country that was nowhere close in the space race, China sure has come far ahead. Only half a century ago it put its first satellite into orbit, whilst tackling a massive disruption caused due a cultural revolution. That was in 1970. To put things into perspective, in 1970, NASA was already halfway through its work on the Voyager spacecrafts which would be launched in the next seven years. Fast forward to today, and China has launched more than 200 rockets in the past 10 years, sent an unmanned mission to the moon, and have their own space station after being kicked out from the International Space Station. China's state media Xinhua claims that at least 300,000 people have worked on China's space projects, almost 18 times the number of employees NASA has. Yes, the space race between the United States and China is set for a new and exciting turn, as the latter is geared to challenge the James Webb Space Telescope with its fleet of tiny satellites, as they dive into deep space. China's scientists are creating a fleet of small satellites to monitor the highly energetic and short-lived violent occurrences of deep space, the Chinese mission has envisioned more than 100 microsatellites, each outfitted with a smaller and lighter version of a typical X-ray telescope. The technique contrasts sharply with the current trend of ever-larger telescopes that can look deeper into space and time. They are calling it the catch, chasing all transients constellation hunters, and it will be a constellation of hundreds of satellites. But if Earth is to meet its long-term space travel ambitions, especially eyeing a future landing on Mars, it will be impossible to rely solely on food brought from Earth, hence, growing food in space is a must. What do you guys have to say? Drop in your comments below, and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.